you didn't just play a game. So, you know, I think I, I think we all know um, um, that our guys are going to be both teams are going to be excited to play, and um, you know, it's the last it's the last game um, before postseason play, and it's an opportunity to play for a championship. Um, it's not a neutral court. It's not a uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where we're going to um, have to play very well um, to have an opportunity to win and. And that's the way it should be at this time of the year. And, and our guys are, are looking forward to that challenge. And, and a, a great challenge it is. Uh, Milwaukee is playing great basketball. And, uh, and they really give teams fits in a number of ways. Are you concerned about the deficits along the way? Well, I think you can go through the list of things. But I think you're always concerned about X's and O's. But you're more concerned about the guys on their team. And, uh, Rob's done a great job of putting his players in, the, in spots where they can all be successful, and they all are very, very skilled. Um, you know, you look, at, you look at Hill. Hill's fantastic, obviously. and Nobody can speak to that more than we can over the past couple years. And, um, but then you look at who they've got around him and how they spread the floor around him, and they really beat us two ways. Um, and so that's why we're going to have to just be better than we've been. You don't have to be. You don't get motivated. You don't get motivated to play this game by anything other than the fact that you're in the game, and so that's. Um, you know, I don't think I don't think it's any of that. Um, they they played really well both times, and and uh, and and we played pretty well the second time. Um, we didn't defend them as well as we would have liked to, and hopefully um, that has spurred us to getting better. But at the same time, they've gotten a lot better. You know, they were were unquestionably the two hottest teams in the league. And, um, and I think that, uh, you know, certainly the motivation is to try to play as well as you can to win a game and to, to play for a championship. Well, I, I don't want to, my, my goal is not to get worse. Um, you have to always be getting better. That doesn't always show itself in the results, though. And um, you know, one of the things, and we're in this in this um, time frame now, where they talk, people talk about bubbles, and people talk about different things. And and I'm proud of our guys because all they've done is focus on the next task and played well. And um, and that's what that's what we should be trying to do. Um, and historically, you know, in uh, especially in three of the past four years, um, we've been playing pretty well coming into this month. I think it's really fun. It's what you you play the whole season to get to, and that's uh, why you try to continue to get better. It's why you practice. What's why you do all those things, and uh, to be able to play in a championship game. That's I think that's what it's about for a student athlete. Could you, uh, could you be a tour guide in Milwaukee now that you've been here so long? You guys have been touring here for several days now. Uh, you know, to be honest, I I can't really give you much of a tour. I haven't been out and about too much. Uh, there's still there's still academics to work on. I've had some homework, so uh, you know you got to get in or stay in and do that. So uh, I wish I could I could give you some kind of tour. Sorry. Sean, Sean how, how much is just all the work that's got to be done and, and, and filling up this much time? I mean, how do you do that? How do you burn up every day? Usually, when you're in a tournament scenario, you play every other day. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, coaches um, spread things out with practice, and uh, like Matt said, homework. Um, you, you got to stay focused no matter what the circumstances is. Like Coach said, you got to stay focused all the time, no matter what's thrown in front of you. So um, I think coaching staff uh, does a good job of keeping us focused. What did you like performance in general? I know there's a format that's kind of special in college basketball. Do you like the way it's set up where the top ranked team gets to play home? There is no neutral court. Um, you know, it. Yeah, you know, and it's it's always the difficult. The hardest part about this year is just because there's three teams that end up in a tie for first. Um, but, you know, the way it used to be was that it rotated at 10 sites, and somebody's going to be at home, you know. And so you're going to have to play teams at home. And, um, you know, to, to earn your way into the postseason, then you got to be able to do special things. 
And I think that's the bottom line. And, and whether you're at home or not, um, you have to play the game well. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what we're going to try to do is play the game well. And, and uh, certainly um, there will be, you know, be a great environment. It's always a great environment here. I thought the other night was terrific when, when the second game started. And, and, uh, but our guys have played in great environments. And, and, again, I think that adds to what Matt said is that that's what you want. You want to, you, you, you know, it's better, it, it's better than the alternative of not playing in it. I think I think it helps to have played in, or even in a preseason tournament, and you play teams and you play them on a neutral floor. And uh, you know we had we had a really great uh, following. I thought I thought yeah. we had uh, you know a great amount of fans, and that really helps. I mean I'd I'd be crazy to tell you that it doesn't, but I think playing in those preseason tournaments and playing on neutral floors has helped. Sean, did it feel like you were playing for a, l a little bit more just because it was? Uh, yeah, I think you can say that. But going along with Matt said, I think the bus that we had, people coming, fans supporting us, made it made a big difference in the atmosphere we're playing here. Brad, uh, your analysis of Udo Young, what have they done to turn it around? Particularly in the top of the ten in a row, to get it going here. You know, uh, <laughs> they played so well against us the first time we played here. Um, and then they, they lost a couple, but then they played so well against us at our place. I've never really seen them. You know, I've never really seen that the side before the turning around side. Um, they are uh, – here's – I just tell you what they, what they do really well is what I was saying earlier is they've got skilled guys around Hill, and Hill, Hill's a really tough guy to match up with. And, and once you leave one of those guys, you're, you're rolling the dice. And I think that that's the bottom line. And um, they do good – they run good actions. Um, and they put guys in the right spots, and they make it really difficult to guard. And on top of that, they do a great job defensively. And I think they've really, uh, I thought both games really, really were, were tuned in. And, and we've got to be really tuned in tomorrow. And, um, you know, I just think they've got it going on both ends of the floor. And I, and, and I don't know, I'll be honest with you, Jim comes down and tells me who makes the all-league teams. But I never read it, and I never really think about it all that much. But. Uh, I think Kalen Williams has meant as much as any addition to any team in our league with the way he runs the, runs the show for them. He's a great passer. Uh, he scores. Um, you know, he can do a lot of different things. He's a good defender. He's a smart guy. So he's been a great addition to an already very solid nucleus of guys. And a couple guys that probably were overshadowed for some of that all-league stuff. And I'm trying to figure out why Boyle and Meyer and those guys with the statistics that they put up weren't honored. You know, I, I think you do start to have, you know, some questions come up or what, you know, what the, what is it going to take? Um, what do we need to do? Um, and, you know, there was, there was a lot of those things that were going through my head a lot. Um, but, you know, it takes it takes a certain, you know, collectiveness. And I think I think that the team's done a really good job of coming together. And it's it's clearly been a change on the defensive end that's, that's sort of sparked it. And that's where... That's where Butler wins games. Brad, was it a little bit unexpected the way that Milwaukee kind of broke you guys down in that second game just because it just didn't look and kind of feel so much different from the first game? There were so many shots in the first game and then it was Kalen penetrating. No, it wasn't unexpected as much as it was what we were. Um, you know, our, our intent in the second game was probably to defend the three-point line a little bit more. And, um, and the bottom line is they, they made plays. You know, and, and we had a chance to win the game, or at least we were in the game with a chance to win it, and, and we didn't um, at that time. And that, that's what we struggled with for a couple weeks there. Um, and uh, But, you know, I think those struggles have made us stronger with regard to finishing games. Now, the, you know, we'll see, we'll see how tomorrow night goes, and we'll see how the rest of the season goes, whatever that may bring. But, um, but no, it wasn't anything that 
it wasn't all that shocking. Again, I think it's somewhat of a pick your poison with, with this group that you're playing against. We'll take a couple more minutes. I think there's no doubt that uh, being in those situations before does help, but it didn't necessarily help in those three games that we talked about. Uh, you know, and, and it just it comes down to buckling down and making plays, especially especially on the defensive end. But we have we have guys that have been there, and I think it really helps when you have a collection of those guys on the floor that can you know continue to reassure each other and and play with that confidence that you talked about. Great memories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is this sort of the game? I mean, when Milwaukee and Butler are playing for a championship, obviously, you know, don't expect any of the other programs to leave. But you know, with this year's GC program, is this sort of the league's premier game? When, when you uh, I don't. For you know, I, I think I've got a great deal of respect for Milwaukee, but I've got a great deal of respect for the other teams in our league. I, I don't want to say that uh, it, it is a premier game, and I don't want to say that we're a premier team. Uh, the bottom line is we're the two teams playing for the championship tomorrow. And, and I think the atmosphere is going to be such that uh, it's a great atmosphere. I mean, it'll be one of the – it'll be – um, you know, we were at Wright State in 07, whenever that was, and, um, you know, at Milwaukee the year before. And those atmospheres have always been really good. So, um, you know, what we're going to try to do again is focus on what we can do. And, and I do think that certainly they've had a, a really successful run um, in, the, in, in the time that I've been at Butler um, in my 11 years. I think we've had a really successful run. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't really want to um, – I don't want to disrespect any other team in the league. And I certainly, um, you know, I want to, you know, just try to play good basketball as Butler.